This is the third section of chapter 11 on vectors and this section is on magnitude and direction. So the first thing is, what do we need by magnitude? Well, the magnitude of a vector is the size or the length of the vector. So let's say, for example, I've got a vector A here and the value of A, it goes X uh, squares across or X number of I's across and Y value of J's going up. Well, then the magnitude or the size of the length of A is given by Pythagoras. So the square root of X squared plus Y squared, you see it here. Now we've got some notation that we use for magnitude and that's this two bars either side of any value basically tells us the size of it and we normally use Pythagoras so I could write this here as equaling this this means the magnitude or the size of a or the size of whatever is in between these two parallel lines here okay now sometimes it's useful to maybe reduce or extend the length of this vector so it's actually one unit long and this is what we call a unit vector so unit vector is a vector which is only one unit or square long and is the same direction as the given vector so let's say i wanted a vector that was in the same direction as this vector here but was only one unit long now the way that i find this unit vector is by taking the vector I'm trying to find a unit vector of and dividing it by its length. If you take a vector and you divide it by its length, you get a unit vector. So this would be the unit vector of A. Now, if you do further maths, you'll see that we put like a little hat over the top, like a little over the top, like this, that little uh, arrow pointing up over the top is another way of indicating that it's a unit vector so in further mass you'll you'll see this so the last thing that we need to be able to do in this section is to be able to find the direction of a vector now to find the direction of a vector we're going to use trigonometry because we've got a right angle triangle here and normally you'll find it's tan or tan inverse to find the direction of a vector but always draw a diagram the diagram will help you make sure that you're working out the correct angle okay because sometimes it's not this angle here that you want maybe we've got the y axis up here and it's this angle that we want so always draw a diagram don't just trying to do it from the numbers because you could end up getting the answer incorrect example 11 given that a equals 3i plus 4j and b equals negative 2i minus 4j find a the magnitude of a the size of a okay so the magnitude of a i'm going to do by doing pythagoras on the numbers three and four so the magnitude of a is equal to pythagoras on this three squared plus four squared it's the length of the vector you should recognize those numbers square root of uh, nine plus 16 so that's going to be square root 25 so the length of the vector is five five units long part b a unit vector in the direction of a so how do we find a unit vector well we're going to take the vector a and divide it by its length so what is the vector a well the vector a is 3i plus 4j and what's its length five so we're going to divide it by five now there's a couple of ways we can deal with this we could actually say right if you divide that vector by five you get three fifths i plus four fifths j or another way of expressing your answer is to say right dividing by five is the same as finding a fifth of something so i could write a fifth of three i plus four j or you could just like leave your answer in this form but normally we'd change it to one of these two forms then part C, find the exact value of the magnitude, the size of 2a plus b. So you want the size of 2a plus b. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to work out what is 2a. 
plus b. Let's find that vector first. So that's two lots of a, 3i plus 4j, um, plus b, which is negative 2i minus 4j. So we can work that out. We'll multiply out the brackets. So we'll have 6i plus 8j. And then we are going to add b. So plus minus 2i minus 4j. And then if we simplify that, what we'll get is 6 plus, 6 plus negative 2i, which is 4i. And then 8 plus negative 4, which is going to be 4j. So this is the resultant vector here. And we want to find the length of that. So we need to find the length of 4i plus 4j. So that means doing Pythagoras on 4 and 4. So four, the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared. That's the square root of 16 plus 16, or root 32. Uh, now we could leave it like that. We probably want to leave our answer exact, so I wouldn't go changing that to a decimal like 5.6568, so on. I'd keep it and change it to 4 root 2. Example 12, find the angle between uh, the vector 4i plus 5j and the positive x-axis. Right, so remember what I said, we want to draw a sketch. So here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. This only needs to be a sketch, but I'm going to try and draw it as accurately as I can. So four squares across, five squares up. So that's going to take me to this point here. So let's draw that vector like that. Um, and we can put the lengths in. So we can see that here is four, because that's the four i. And this bit going up is five. And we want to find the angle between this vector and the positive x-axis, so we want this one here. So this is the angle that we need to find. Let's call that angle theta rather than calling it eight, as I just wrote down. So let's try and find that angle there. So this is going to be simple trigonometry. Theta is going to equal to the tan inverse because it's opposite and adjacent. The tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent. So the tan inverse of five over four. So let's see what that gives us. Theta equals 51.3401, and it goes on. We'll give our answer either to one decimal place for an angle or three significant figures. So 51.3 degrees rounded to three significant figures. Now, just a little note, I've drawn my vector coming from the origin here. It could come from any point. So, for example, if I had drawn my vector, let's say, up here somewhere, then this would be the positive x-axis parallel to the x-axis here. I'd still be trying to find this angle. So it doesn't have to be coming from the origin. It could be anywhere. The angle we're trying to find would still be the same because we would just say, right, the positive x-axis, well, it's parallel to this line here. Example 13, vector A has a magnitude 10 and makes an angle of 30 with J. Find A in I, J and column vector notation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to draw a sketch of what this vector looks like. Okay, so here's my uh, Y axis. Here's my X axis here and this vector has a length of 10, a magnitude of 10, and makes an angle of 32, uh, 30 degrees with J. So basically like the Y axis. So I will draw a vector like this. The length of that vector is 10. And this angle here, the angle that the vector makes with J, and J is here, is 30 degrees. Okay, so let's just put 30 degrees here and we want to find basically what's the i part and the j part 
of this vector here. Okay, so one way of doing it is to say, right, if this angle is 30, the angle on this side is 60, like this, and I want to work out what this length is here, and I want to work out what this length is here. I want to work out this x value and y value, and this is just trigonometry again. So let's start by just taking the diagram out in here, and this is basically what the problem is. We have the hypotenuse here, uh, the opposite here, and the adjacent. We want to find the adjacent. We've got the hypotenuse in the angle. So remember our triangles from GCSE. This will be CAH because it's adjacent and hypotenuse. I want to find the adjacent. So it's going to be the cosine of the angle times by 10. Or I could write uh, x equals 10 times by the hypotenuse, which is 10, times by the cosine of 60. That gives you 5, since cos 60 is a half. And then we'll do a similar diagram to allow us to find out what the y part is. So same sort of diagram again with our 60 degrees here, our 10 here. But this time we want to find this side here, which is y. So again, labeling it up, hypotenuse adjacent opposite. This time we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So this is sine SOH. So if I want to find the value of Y, which is the opposite, I need to do sine 60 times by 10 or 10 times by sine 60 times sine 60. And the exact value of that is five root three. So we found the what we call the two components, the x part and the y part of this vector, and we need to write it in ij and column vector no, uh, notation. So a, first of all, written in ij notation will be 5i. And we know it's positive because it's going this way. And the j part is going to be positive, so plus 5 root three now this is why it's important to draw a diagram because it could be that even one of these values is negative but trigonometry won't tell us that it'll just tell us the length our diagram will tell us whether the the values um, of i and j are positive or negative and the other way we want to write our answer is column vector notation so that would just be five at the top and then five root three at the bottom so you should now be able to do exercise 11C on pages 240 to 242 of the textbook.